So here we are again, back on the annual Pokemon hype train. And this year, I can't say I'm on board. You see, I have an odd relationship when it comes to Pokemon. I still follow the franchise closely, but I tend to lose interest in the games every once in a while until the next big step in the franchise takes place. Yet I still find myself buying the games every year anyway. It's quite the unhealthy habit. Although surprisingly, this time, I'm not the only one who's not too happy with the latest installment of the Pokemon franchise. It was disclosed not long after E3 that Sword and Shield would not have a national Pokedex, something that's been a staple in the series since the very beginning. Suffice to say, the response has been... well... <laughs> now... With so many creatures being introduced with every new installment, it was only a matter of time before we could no longer catch them all, even though this game series is completely based around the concept of catching them all. Here's the thing, though. The game industry has changed quite a bit since the days of Red and Blue, and with every new installment, the Pokémon Company introduces more and more network connectivity to these games, making them feel an odd amount like a bizarre single-player MMO affair. Heck, Sword and Shield is introducing raid bosses for Pete's sake. Hey guys, Let's do this! Leroy Dragons! Now, I know what you're thinking. Pyro, I've read the title. That's clickbait, right? You don't actually think a beloved series like Pokemon should take on the live service model? And to that, I say yes, uh, no, maybe. Alright, shut up and listen. I'm usually one of the people who believe that the games-as-a-service model is the embodiment of Satan in video game form. Uh, it's subtle, actually. But hear me out. A live service model can be used as an excuse to release an unfinished product, yes, but it could also be used as a way to add things into the game post-launch that they couldn't have during development due to different constraints. This way they'd be able to do stuff after the fact, like, you know, finishing the Pokedex? They could easily release the game, move most of the team onto the next game, and then set aside a smaller team to put out little patches under the guise as migrations of Pokémon into the region. Pokémon GO already does something very similar with how they integrate each generation of Pokémon each year. If they would want to go the extra step, instead of making Pokémon Ultra Sword and Shield 2 Emerald Edition a year later, they could instead just make an expansion pack with a battle frontier, a new story, and all the things we expect from those remakes. Instead of a way to exploit the player, they could use the live service model as a way to expand the life of the game by retaining player interest, thus giving them more time to work on the next generation. Of course, this isn't ideal to me. I'd love to have a Breath of the Wild-esque non-linear Pokémon adventure, but putting into consideration the size of Game Freak as a company, that's just not realistic. Post-launch editions like this just seem to fit with the direction the franchise is already going. So what do you guys think? Am I being ridiculous? Tell me in the comments below. Either way, thanks for watching. If you like this video, then leave a like and become a pyromaniac yourself by subscribing. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.